Ever on top of the game, Aliyah Shanim Bad mouth to change here, carry the flame So just subscribe and like and comment If you now watch Aliyah YouTube, no make no sense So, we're finally back again with another video So as you guys know, this is Mortician Campbell Mortician Melville And today, we're going to show you a few things that we use In the morgue, in embalming, and that funerals all right so first we're gonna start with the embalming sector so this is one of our gears this is the respirator i'll show you how we wear it and why i'll tell you why as well all right so this is the respirator so instead of using the regular mask which is worn by everybody else like the disposable blue ones or the n95 we use the respirator because the respirator has two filters at the end so the filters can actually change you can take these parts off and you change your filters that come inside so this prevents us from inhaling the formaldehyde or any other chemical which is used in embalming it protects you from harmful diseases that can cause further fatal <laughs> fatality <laughs> all right so this is how it's worn so guys it's basically to block the smells block hazards and block aerosols so she's showing you how you put it on and you strap it around sometimes it can get uncomfortable if you have it on for too long but it is very effective and if you're an embalmer, we advise you to use it to protect yourself. So this is it. That is swag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, guys. So we're going to look at the instruments now. So there are a lot of different instruments. We just chose that the one. We chose the ones that we use most frequently. So this is basically a clamp. You know the, the correct terminology? Because I don't remember it. Guys, we left school a long time. This is a clamp. We normally use it to help us to stop leakage and also to hold in place the Otherwise tube. Otherwise called the locking force. Right. The tube that is connected to the embalming machine, which is this. So this is, this is connected to a tube, like a hose to the machine. And this is placed inside the artery to distribute embalming fluid throughout the body. Here we have an angular forcep. So the angular forcep, you can use it to put inside of veins or arches just the same to test the flow. flow. So you can push it in, pull it out. So we normally use that for drainage for the vein. This is a regular forcep. So this is normally used for any little task. We use it for almost everything. So if we need help loosening a thread or what's the correct term now? Ligature. Ligature. That's what we call embalming thread. And we normally it. use it. This is what it looks like. It's basically a it's like a thick piece of cord, but it is waxed. So it's different from regular threaded. It's not easy to break. And you cannot use it to suit your clothing. Right. So it, it kind, the texture is kind of hard. It's kind of coarse. So we use that to sew. And this is, the, this is one of the needles. This is the most common type that we use. So it's shaped like this. So it's easy to manipulate. So it's a curved needle. Okay, so this is a scalpel blade. The blade is not on it, because you know we didn't want to cut ourselves. But this is what we place the blade on. <laughs> so guys, this is my favorite tool, and that is Michaela's. They're both shaped differently. They're so, basically used for the same thing. Right, it's the same tool, but 
different design. So I'm more comfortable with this one. So I use this to raise arches. And she also used that to raise arches. All right, so these are locking scissors. So when we're doing cases like a topsy cases and so forth where you want to close off a leakage, so a vein or an artery may have fluid coming from it and cause leakage or excess flu excess, well, excess fluid sorry, to be leaking and that irritates the eyes or the nose if you're not wearing a respirator. So what you do is you basically use this and you just clamp onto it and that will just close off leakage that's happening mm -hmm. all right guys so i have the blade here it's a regular scalpel blade that regular doctors or nurses would use so this is the blade it comes in this shiny little plastic and this is the handle so it's the scalpel blade and this is the handle so you will take the blade from the plastic and you attach it to the scalpel handle and now you have a full scalpel so this is what we use when we're embalming we use this to make any incisions on the bodies okay so this is a mouth farmer so we use this when the deceased may not have any Teeth, or if we need it to fill gaps so we use this along with cotton and we try to form the mouth to how it looked when they were alive here we have mortuary wax so mortuary wax is mostly used in restoration so when we have like those cases that go through trauma for example or accident cases or gunshot wounds we use what we call mortuary wax so if you have a disease that a part of their facial feature is missing for example the eyes the ears the nose the mouth we would use the mortuary wax and we would actually make so, yes. those features so yes we make body features as well okay right guys this is an eye cap i'm going to come closer because it's clear so we use eye caps when the eye area is sunken. So to give it a more lifelike look, we use eye caps to kind of bring up the feature. So we use this alongside with cotton. So this is placed in your eye, guys. This, however, is a head block. See if you realize the shape of the head block. So this is how we place it and this semicircular area here is where the neck or the back of the head of the deceased is placed preferably the back of the head so that the head will basically be set for when you're placing the deceased in the casket they are not crooked backwards or sideways so it would have a perfect set when you place it in a casket. So this is what we use to set the head. It's called a head block. Okay guys, this is a syringe. So, it's the same thing as what regular doctors would use, just the same. When you're getting an injection or if they're basically drawing blood from you for some reason or the other. So it's the exact same thing, just that we use it for different things. For example, in tissue building, so it's the exact same syringe and you attach a needle to it just the same so because it's clear i'm going to show you close up so this is how it looks as michaela said we use it for feature building and this is the cover we place embalming fluid inside and we elevate the tissues if they look sunken or emaciated. Now we're taking the step further. This is what we call 
a cover up it's a regular ppe that is personal protective equipment just the same and this is how it's worked so it's like a hospital gown basically it's the same design for the hands so, yeah so we normally put on a lab coat then we put on our overall and then we put on an apron so we're fully covered we have our respirator also our gloves and our water boots so we need to be well protected because there are lots of harmful chemicals that we use and also diseases that can be spread okay another one of our instruments this is a trocar basically this trocar is connected to a hose or a tube that is connected to the embalming machine just the same that the fluid comes from and sometimes it's connected to an aspirator so it's used for two purposes mainly for cavity treatment for aspiration and also for hypodermic treatment so that's three so basically we make an incision with our blade and the scalpel and the tube is pretend that the tube is connected to this end right so there's a hole there and we work it basically so aspiration is to take out excess fluid cavity treatment is to add fluid and treat cavities so like we puncture the heart the lungs and other organs and hypodermic treatment is is a type of feature building but for larger body areas for example so like your limbs both yeah. hands both legs so if your hand and legs are not getting the embalming fluid from arterial injection that's from the artery we normally use the trocar to make up for it so we make an incision place the trocar inside and then we suit so using our ligature and our needle and close the incision and some people use trocar buttons those are buttons that you basically screw in the incision to close it all right, now we get into the fun part. <laughs> so this is what we call a union hall. Or in layman terms, you would say a monkey suit. So this is an extra large one, as you can see, because I'm very tiny. <laughs> so we put this on the deceased before we put the clothes on. So this prevents any leakage that may come from the body before you actually put the clothes on. So instead of messing up the clothing of the seas, we put the union all on. So the union all, it has a zipper. Yeah, so it zips goes straight to the crotch area. And you basically go inside of it just the same, both legs, both arms and then you zip it at the back and then you tie it at the back of the neck yeah. onto so the disease so you tie it so after you put this on it covers the entire body of the disease and then you place the clothing over it so no leakage that may come from any incisions that were made will actually reach onto the clothing of the disease so, in this scene, we're going to act out two cases for you, two different types of pickups. So a crime scene where we use the body bag and a regular home pickup or sudden death where we use just a sheet. So let's go. So we're at the home. This is our stretcher. Alright, so guys, this is our stretcher. This is what we place the seat on. Before we place them on the stretcher, you know, we spoke out the house or the area to place it in a position where we know we can manage it and the part that we're going to take to bring it from where the seat is to the box. So before we place them on the stretcher, we're going to use a sheet. So 
We spread it out evenly because we're going to wrap them after. And you know, the stretcher has straps. So once we wrap them in the sheet, we strap them down so that they don't fall off. Okay, so first we're going to lift. So we're going to position ourselves. So it's normally two persons and a pickup. So depends on the, depending on the size of the person. So this is a regular pickup, or the seat is lightweight. So it's just two of us. So one person is going to lift the head or the shoulders, or the head or the shoulders, and the other person is going to lift the foot, the feet. All right, so here we go. So they're placed on the stretcher evenly. So we ensure that their head is set to avoid swelling. So from the point of pickup, we're going to set their head in the position that they will be in the casket. And we also set the hands like the position in the casket. So now we're going to use our sheet to cover them. So now we're going to strap so that they don't fall off when we're moving. <laughs> All right, so the belts are adjustable. So we adjust it based on how tight we want it. So it depends on the size of the disease. All right, so the excess, we just fold it under. And now it's time for us to move to the bus. So we're lifting and we're heading to the bus to take our disease in our care. <laughs> we're going to show you an example of a crime scene people. This time instead of the sheet, we're using a body bag. Alright. So we're on the scene, we place our stretcher, we scope out the place. And then we're going to place our body bag on the stretcher instead of the sheet. So the body bag has a zipper. So we're going to unzip. persons are on the pickup so it's just two because our disease is lightweight and one person holds the head or the shoulders and the other holds the feet okay so same procedure we set the head in the position that we are going to use in the casting and we also set the hands if possible, because you know there's rigor mortis. That is the stiffness of the limbs or a body part after death. That can be corrected during embalming in some cases. All right, so once they're positioned properly, we normally 
hold and then sit. So we fold and sit. So this is this is basically what we do. Zip right up. Okay guys, so this is our lowering device. This is what we use to lower the casket and place it in the grave. So this is our belt. This is what the casket is placed on. I'm going to show you the normal procedure and afterwards I'll video close up so that you can see exactly what I'm referring to. Okay, so first, based on how wide the grave is, we're going to place the machine on it and we're going to adjust the width. We're going to adjust the width to the size of the grave. So this is what we use. This is at both ends, and both ends have some holes. So each end, we normally allow them to have the same amount of holes to make sure it's evenly distributed. So you basically pull this out and adjust it to how wide you want it to be. So this is three. So the other end, we're going to do the same. So this is three. So we call this locking on three. So if it was two, we'd say lock on two. So now we're going to tighten our belt to ensure that the casket doesn't lower before we're ready. All right, guys. So you see, after we make our adjustments to the width, we have to ensure that the bolt is tightened after we pull it out. So once we pull it out, we ensure that it goes in back in place so that it doesn't shift. So we're going to tighten our belt now. So we basically just wind until it's tight enough. So we can test it if it's not moving. So once we tighten our belt, we're going to basically lock the machine in place. So this is for the belt to not move. So some of them normally, they have a lever, a small lever that you place upwards so that it doesn't move. But I don't have it here. So I just screw this in and it's in place. So once it's time for the body to be lowered, Sometimes with the lever, you place it down and the machine lowers the casket. In this case, I'm going to loose and I'm going to wind down until the casket is lowered. So basically, that's how we use a machine. Once we're finished and the casket is lowered, we normally have to Basically, play with the belt and get it out of the region of the casket to take it out. Once we take it out, we wind again until it's back in place. And then we readjust. So we basically close it at both ends. And we move. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry for being so late but I tried my best to incorporate as much as I can. You know due to circumstances I can't show you everything but don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I love you guys. Hi guys. Of course it is showing you they're looking at camera. Hi guys, good morning. We're finally back again with another video. Video. <laughs> <laughs> what?